Hey guys, Mr. Backward here. This is part one of lesson 5.2. One objective for this video, we're going to do something called verifying trig identities. So as we're going through verifying these trig identities, these are going to be some helpful hints or tips that we can use along the way. And number one, we always want to work with one side of the equation at a time, meaning we're not allowed to move things from the left side to the right side or vice versa. Number two, we're going to look to see if we can use any of our fundamental trig identities to help us simplify things down or rewrite things. Number three says we're going to look to see if we can factor, add fractions, or square a binomial, or anything along those lines. If none of that stuff is working, number four says we're going to try to convert everything into sines and cosines. And number five, if nothing at all seems to be working, we just have to try something to get us started along the way. So here's our first example. We're going to verify the identity that says the secant squared of theta minus 1 divided by the secant squared of theta is equal to the sine squared. Now when we're doing this, we typically want to work with the more complicated side first and then try to simplify that down to equal the other side. So I'm focusing on this left-hand side right here. We've got secant squared of theta minus 1 over the secant squared. We're going to try to use some of our trig identities to simplify this down. And I'm looking on top. We've got a Pythagorean identity that says the tangent squared of theta is the same as the secant squared of theta minus one. So I'm gonna replace the secant squared of theta minus one on top with our tangent squared. So then we've got tangent squared of theta over the secant squared of theta equals the sine squared of theta. Now we're trying to get the left side of this to equal the right side of this. The right side is in terms of sines, so I'm thinking maybe it would be helpful for us to take the stuff on the left-hand side and turn it into sines and cosines. As far as tangents, we know that a tangent of theta is a sine over a cosine, but this is a tangent squared. So when I replace this, I'm going to make it a sine squared over a cosine squared. So left-hand side, sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. I'm also going to change the bottom because we know that the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. So I'm going to make this one over a cosine squared of theta since this is a secant squared. And we haven't changed anything on the right side. We haven't moved anything because we can't move anything from the left to the right. So we're just trying to get the left to equal the right hand side. Now, I don't like looking at this as a fraction division problem. So instead of dividing by this one over the cosine squared on bottom, I'm going to turn it into a multiplication problem by using the reciprocal of this thing. So then our problem says sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta times cosine squared of theta over one equals a sine squared of theta. And then changing this into a multiplication problem lets us do a little bit of canceling. We can cancel out this cosine squared with our other cosine squared. Then all we have left on the left-hand side is a sine squared of theta. We were trying to get that to equal a sine squared of theta. We did, so we're all done with this one. Example number two says we've got sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta times the secant squared of theta, and we're gonna show that that's equal to one. So again, we're gonna start on the more complicated left-hand side and try to get it to equal the right-hand side. Now on top, I see sine squared plus cosine squared, and we should by now automatically recognize that as our Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So I'm gonna replace this stuff on top with a one over cosine squared of theta times the secant squared of theta equals one. Now we have to play around with the bottom a little bit now. We know that cosines and secants are reciprocals of each other. So I'm focusing on this secant and I'm gonna turn it into a cosine. So we're not gonna change that cosine squared at all, but secant, remember, is one over the cosine. This is a secant squared, so I'm gonna make that one over the cosine squared of theta. We're gonna show that's equal to one. Now, if we look at what's happening on the bottom, we are multiplying these fractions together. Well, this cosine squared is gonna cancel out with our other cosine squared. So left-hand side, we've got one over one, which we know is just the same as one. So we got one equals one, so we're done. In our next example, we've got some fraction addition happening on the left-hand side, and we're gonna show that that stuff is the same as two secant squared of alpha. 
So what I'm looking at first is in order to add these fractions together, we're going to need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply each fraction by the other fraction's denominator. So over here on the left hand side, I'm going to multiply by one plus the sine of alpha on top and on bottom. With our right fraction, I'm going to multiply by one minus the sine of alpha on top and bottom. Now on top, when we take one plus the sine of alpha times one, we're just going to get one plus the sine of alpha. Then we've got our plus sign in the middle here. If we multiply one by one minus the sine of alpha, we're just gonna get one minus the sine of alpha. On bottom, if we were to foil these out, this positive sine of alpha is gonna cancel out with a negative sine of alpha. So we'll end up getting one minus a sine squared of alpha, and we're showing that that's equal to two secant squared of alpha. Now on top, we can do a little canceling. We've got this positive sine of alpha and a negative sine of alpha. I'm also going to add these ones together right away. So one plus one is two over one minus the sine squared of alpha. And again, we're still showing that's equal to two secant squared of alpha. Now one minus the sine squared, that's one of our Pythagorean identities. One minus the sine squared of alpha is the same as the cosine squared of alpha. And using what we know about reciprocals, well, we know reciprocal of cosine squared is secant squared. So left-hand side is two secant squared of alpha, and the right-hand side is two secant squared of alpha. Left matches the right, so we're all done with this one. This is our last example for this video. We're going to verify this identity. And first thing I notice right away is this first piece, this tangent squared of x plus one. That's one of our Pythagorean identities tangent squared plus one is the same as a secant squared of x. And then we've got this cosine squared of x minus one. And eventually we're gonna show that's the same as a negative tangent squared of x. Now here's what I see going on. Inside of our parentheses, we've got a cosine. Outside of our parentheses, we've got a secant. Well, we know some things about how those are related to each other. So I'm gonna take this secant squared of x and make it one over the cosine squared of x, and then we've got this times the cosine squared of x minus one, and our negative tangent squared of x. Now I'm going to distribute this fraction through, and if we take one over the cosine squared times a cosine squared, we're just gonna get one because those cosines will cancel out. And then if we take one over the cosine squared of x times our negative one, we're going to get minus one over the cosine squared of x equals our negative tangent squared of x. Now, if we look at these, we've got this tangent squared. Earlier, we used a Pythagorean identity to take a tangent squared and sort of turn it into a secant. So I'm thinking maybe we wanna take this one over the cosine and turn it back into a secant. So now we've got one minus a secant squared of x equals negative tangent squared of x, and this is really close to one of our Pythagorean identities, but the signs are wrong. Okay, here we've got a positive one, we would need a negative one. Here we've got a negative secant squared of x, we would need a positive secant squared of x. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna factor a negative one out of there. When we do that, factoring a negative one out of this positive one turns it into a negative one, and if we take a negative out of this minus secant squared of x, it becomes a positive secant squared of x and we're showing that's equal to a negative tangent squared of x. Now we can use a Pythagorean identity with this second piece because that's the same as a tangent squared of x. So we've got negative one times a tangent squared of x equals negative tangent squared of x. And if we take the negative one times our tangent squared of x, we're just going to get negative tangent squared of x equals negative tangent squared of x the left side matches the right side, so we're all done with this one. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.